Favorite song ko din niya ng 80s. Pero, siyempre, ang topic natin ngayon ay tungkol sa pera. <coughs> Family expenses, husband or wife or both. What God and man's law have to say about it? Good afternoon everyone, this is Papa Angelos. Successful life series program at FB and YouTube Live. Today is August 23, 2020. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my FBN YouTube Live Channel Weekly Program. This is a successful life series every Sunday. Na pwede magpabago ng inyong buhay. Makinig lang kayo. At i-apply. <laughs> Hindi pwede makinig lang. Kailangan i-apply ang mga natututunan na pinagtsatsagaan kong hanapin. <laughs> Dahil baka ito na ang sagot sa ating mga problema lalo na ngayong pandemic kaya subay-bayin nila ako every Sunday at malaking tulong po ang mga bagay na sinishare natin dito dahil ito ay mga pinag-aralan din ng mga eksperto at nasubukan na rin ang mga mag-asawa at naging effective sa kanilang pagsasama at naging mas matibay ang kanilang pamilya kaya Mga kaibigan, nagbubuluhan ka ba sa buhay mo? Lalo na sa mga mag-asawa? Marami ka bang tanong sa buhay mo na hindi na sasagot ng magulang mo simula pagkabata mo? At ngayon, dumanda ka na lahat ay hindi pa rin nasasagot? Na kahit mga kaibigan mo ay hindi masagot? Hanggat inabutan ka na ng pandemic, wala pa rin sagot? Baka ito na ang programang sasagot sa mga tanong mo? Sa mga tanong ninyo mag-asawa? Baka si Baba Angelo na ang sagot sa malaking question mark sa buhay mo. Dahil ako din ako ng maraming tanong sa buhay, mga tanong na hindi mo makikita ang sagot sa eskwelahan, na hindi mo makikita ang sagot sa kahit anong libro sa library, na makikita mo lang pala sa isang napakahalagang libro na iningatan from generation to generation. Libro na hindi ko makupas kahit anong panahon, na kahit lumipas mo ng langit at lupa, buo ba rin ang libro niyan? At ang libro niyan ang may, mas may maliwanag na paliwanag kung saan tayo nang galing, sinong mo sa atin at paano tayo ginawa. Tayo ay product niya. Tayo mga tao. Human being. So tawagin natin siyang manufacturer. At ang uh, libro niyan na sinasabi ko ay manufacturer's manual. Manufacturer's means manu or the maker. And factual means, or factual means, the mind of the maker. The purpose of why that product was made by the maker. At sa bawat product ng bawat manufacturer ay may instructions manual. Doon lamang nakasulat ang kanilang mga sikreto kung paano ginawa ang isang produkto at ano ang mga special features na nakapaloob doon. Wait lang po ah. <laughs> Ayun. At ang instructions manual na yan ang magpapaliwanag ng purpose at tamang pagkamit sa product. Okay? Kaya pag tayo mga tao ay nag-malfunction, we should always refer to our manufacturer's manual. Dahil pag hindi natin binabasa ang manufacturer's manual na yan, every time we malfunction as human beings, or hindi, we didn't care to read it before applying it in our lives, eh, paano mo nga i-apply kung hindi mo mga binasa? Tao lang tayo. We malfunction as human beings at pag tayo nag-malfunction, we complicate things. We make wrong decisions in life. At kadalasan, yung wrong decisions na yan has a lifetime effect. 
Kapatid sa ulo natin, we try to solve problems in our own way. We experiment. So ang ending, trial and error. Trial, then error. Trial, then error. We experiment what works or not. Then we get hurt in the process. Masakit nito, pati mga loved ones natin, nasasaktan natin. We hurt our families, we break our relationships. And according to history of mankind, many did not survive experimenting. Parang airplane din kasi yan. Nagpa-under ka ng aeroplano without the GPS, compass, without the right guide. In the middle of your journey, nag-experiment ka. Try this, try that, try this, try that. And according to the experts, when we experiment things, we make it complicated talaga. And complication is the result of our ignorance daw. Ignorance to what? To how to operate the product. Ignorance to the manufacturer's manual. Because we don't care to read our manufacturer's mind on how and why we are created as human beings. And what to do when we are malfunctioning as human beings. Kompleto yun. Iniwan niya lahat ng guide doon. So today, pag-usapan natin muli ang mga issues na madalas gumugulo sa buhay natin. Ito ang ating topic ngayon. Family expenses. Husband or wife or both. What God and man's laws have to say about it. Bakit kailangan pag-usapan ito? Family expenses. Financial matters. Madalas din itong pinag-aawain ng mag-asawa. At pag nagpatong-patong ang lahat ng dahilan ninyong mag-asawa sa mga pinagtatalunan ninyo <laughs> bukod sa financial expenses, eh, nauuwi talaga sa hiwalaya. So, marami ang masyadong confident sa pag-aasawa without discussing this issue, this financial matter during marriage. Masyadong confident tayo. Kaya, ano nangyayari? Again, trial and error. <laughs> okay. Ang feeling kasi natin, ah, madali na pag-usapan niya. O, oh, sagot mo yung meralko, sagot mo yung tubig, sagot mo yung ano. Oh, Dali-dali lang, Papa Angelo, kailangan mo pag-usapan niya. <laughs> yes, kailangan pag-usapan. Bakit? Marami na naging hulay dahil dito. <laughs> dahil, sa, dahil sa pera. Okay? Eh kasi nagpapatong-patong yan eh. Siyempre, eh, pag napuno na, eh, doon ka na mag-design. Ayaw ko na. <laughs> Pag nagpatong-patong ng dahilan mo, oh, isa lang yung pera eh. Siyempre, affected na yung iba. Pag hindi nakikisama yung isang partner sa usaping pera, talagang mauuwi sa problema. At another problema. And another problema. Hanggang sa hindi na kayo nag-uusap. Okay? <laughs> okay? So, bago puntahan yung, bago puntahan yung detalye, mga kaibigan, thank you, ha, Sir Gabriel, for watching. Uh, Maginig ko muna ating sponsors. This MB Live presentation is brought to us by BCIDP Exclusive School for Couples with, uh, which advocates building of stronger marriage foundations and happier families for the next generation. BCIDP Family Mediation Center Philippines, the very first family mediation center that advocates strengthening every family in the Philippines for a stronger nation by settling the disputes of every couple or families who are going into courts is not an option. That every Dispute in the marriage can be easily resolved with the proper guidance of a better mediator or a better mediation center that focuses on the foundation of the nation, which is the family. And so this is in cooperation also with BCIDP Law Office, which provides legal solutions and best practices to your marriages like annulment, nullity of marriage, Islamic divorce, divorce recognition, family problems, visa problems, immigration problems, corporate problems, property problems, and other problems pertaining to those issues or disputes at ang klaseng problema sa negosyo, ari-arian, property, property, pamilya, kasal, paghihiwala, islamic divorce, visa. <laughs> lahat po yan. <laughs> Ginagawa po nila. <laughs> Siguro kung saan lahat yung problema ninyo, sa so pamagitan lang pala ng expertise. Kaya kung kailangan nyo ng payong legal o aksyong legal para sa inyong mga problema, sisikapin na lang matulungan kayo at sila ay may mahigit na 30 years na experience sa paghahap ng mga kasong legal sa Pilipinas. 
particular na sa mga itubag deals sa tatlong branches ng ating gobyerno, which is the executive, the judiciary, and the legislative. At ang bago tatlag nilang opisina, ang Family Education Center, ay kauna-una ang kumpanya na ang tanyang layunan ay mapatibay, may salba ang naman sigalot sa mga itong mag-asawa o mag-anak na hindi na kailangan pa pupunta sa court. Okay. So once again, this IDP Family Education Center Philippines, ang kumpanya na nagbilikis sa bawat pamilyang Pilipino. Isa tayo nila ang kanilang website, bcidplogroup.com or dito sa Facebook. And so, our topic for today, umpisa ko na, family expenses. Sa goodbye doon ang husband lang ng wife o both. <laughs> Sana marami pa makapanood dito, no? Gusto kong umpisahan ang usaping ito sa pangangailangan ng pamilyang Pilipino. How much daw does a family of five needs to survive in a month? Kung lima kayong membro ng pamilya sa, uh, sa bahay, lima kayo, magkano kailangan nyo daw para makasurvive sa isang buwan? Okay? So, basahin natin ito. Ito ay... Uh, mula sa report ng NEDA mula sa pag-aaral ng NEDA okay how much ang kailangan 42,000 a month to survive imagine mo yan ayon sa pag-aaral nila mula sa Philippine Star June 8, 2018 okay baka uh, 2019 pareho lang 2020 baka tumaas na to ng konti Okay? Sabi dito, Amid the ruthless spark by a government's economy's pronouncement that a 10,000 budget is enough for a family of five to survive, Social Economic Planning Secretary Ernesto Pernia clarified the figure should actually be 42,000. My goodness. <laughs> Pernia was quoted as saying in an interview with JMN7 that an average Filipino family would actually need an aggregate income of 42,000 to live above the poverty line. Okay? Pag bababa sa 42,000, ibig sabihin, eh, nasa poverty line ka. <laughs> so, this is based on the assumption that a household has two family members earning 21,000 each per month, which, under the tax reform law, exempts them from paying income tax. So, pag kumikita kayo na mag-asawa na 21,000 each per month, exempted yan sa income tax. Kaya yung 42,000 na yan, may uuwi din dalawa. Okay? <laughs> so, yun ang figure na kailangan pala. So, kinlarify. Kasi nung una nila, una nila lang nireporto sa media, eh, itong 10,000 daw, pwede na. <laughs> below, below minimum wage yun eh. Okay? So, kinlaro nila yan. So, kung after 2 years, ang pag-uusapan natin, eh, baka 43 or 44 or 45,000 na ngayon ang kailangan. <laughs> Lalo na ngayon may pandemic. Okay? So, another news report. COVID-19 will devastate the poor. A report by Sheila Coronel from The Interpreter. Galing sa site na lowyinstitute.org. The pandemic threatens to break the already frayed fabric of communities that had not yet recovered from the drug from the drug war. Okay, hindi pa nakaka recover do sa drug war. May COVID na naman. Ay, oh nga, sa sa pesto naman. <laughs> May COVID pa kaya makaka-apekto daw ng gusto ito sa mga mahihirap. Okay? Sabi dito, Flaviano Flaviano Villanueva was in tears last Thursday. Oh, this is published pala, March 24, 2020. It, it was day 5 of the enhanced community quarantine in Metro Manila. Day 5, panglimang araw. Where the priest runs a homeless center. Oh, pari pala to, si Father Flaviano Villanueva. The sprawling Philippine capital of 13 million people had been sealed off. And police and army troopers were guarding municipal boundaries to prevent entry of and exit. Businesses were shuttered, public transport was scarce. Early that morning, Dozens of homeless people lined up on the street outside the Kalinga Care Center, 
waiting for the doors to open ni Father Flaviano. They stood 1.5 meters apart in line with the government's guidance for the quarantine at the time. But the head of the barangay or village council, who had not been happy having the center there, ordered it to shut and drove the homeless away. Oh, grabe naman to si Kapitan. The barangay captain said they were just following the law. No mass gatherings. Yulano ever said. But the first law is to save lives. These are among the first people who are going to die. <laughs> so, yun po ang ating sitwasyon. Hindi lang naman po dyan sa lugar na yan na binanggit at marami pang lugar ang apektado. Okay? Isa-isain lang muna natin itong mga problema na to bago tayo mapunta sa papalapit sa ating uh, main topic. Okay? Cost of living in the Philippines. Kung uh, gusto mo manirahan sa Pilipinas, ito para sa mga foreigner, ito ang kanilang pinapayo. The Philippines is the 13th most populated country on earth. Panlabing tatlo na tayo sa most populated country on earth. Millions of tourists and expats arrive there each year, hoping to get a glimpse of some unique biodiversity. If it's beaches, mountains, rainforests, and islands you're after, the Philippines is your spot. Also, it's a true melting pot. Over 125 individual languages are spoken within Filipino borders. Whether you're retiring, temporarily relocating, or moving to the Philippines for good, you'll want to plan your budget. Here's what you need to know about costs and finances while you're there. How expensive the Philippines in comparison to other countries? In general, you'll find life in the Philippines pretty affordable. Upon your arrival, you want to exchange money from your home country to the local currency. Then, uh, ang uh, cost of living daro dito sa atin ayon sa kanilang pag-aaral sa so Manila kung titira sila dito one bedroom flat in city 25,000 ang rent kung uh, kakain kayo sa mid-range restaurant dalawa kayo 1,000 kung uh, transportation budget monthly ito ah 1,530 Okay? Sa Manila. Binigay din yung mga example sa Quezon City, magkano ang gastos, kinumpare. At ang pinakamahal na expensive major cities daw sa atin, no? top 5 most expensive cities to live in the Philippines, Manila, Cebu City, Quezon City, Davao City, kagayang de Oro. <laughs> so, ibig sabihin, iwasan nyo itong mga lugar na to. <laughs> okay. Ganun pala yun. Ayan. Okay. What else? Kung solo ka lang or individual, kung nag-iisa ka sa buhay, eto naman ang kailangan mo para mabuhay ng marangal. <laughs> okay. To the comfortable, uh, from cnnphilippines.com uh, This is published January 12, 2018. Okay. Research from 2016 shows about 50% of 25 to 35 year old millennials still live under their parents' roof. And for extended periods of time, only 8% of early baby boomers in their heyday in 1981 did the same. But it isn't just the generation gap that's causing the shift. The results of the United States-based study are affected by the country's housing problems, recession, and steep standard of living. Ang uh, kailangan mo daw dito, pag solo ka, ito ang budget. In-interview nila si Laika Aguilar age 21, program coordinator. Nung maging financially independent na siya sa magulang niya, humiwalay na siya. She got a full-time job at a non-profit organization. So, rent and electricity take up a large chunk of the bill, which Aguilar splits with three other roommates. They end up paying just short of 5,000 a month for their flat in Ortigas. So, kung tatlo, tatlo sila nagre-rent, uh, split nila yon, 5,000 a month, kasi 15,000 above yung rent ng condo. So, kung nagsusolo ka talaga, you need about, hindi nilagay dito. Pero, the reality of this is, kailangan mo kumita, as a solo individual, kailangan mo kumita ng between 18 to 21,000. Kasi, kung, kung kamilyado ka na, yun ang naging patayan, no? Take 21,000 kayo mag-asawa para makasurvive. For your family to survive. Next, Kung makapansin nyo, uh, the society or the government provides these to the females. 
kung mang, siyempre, pag nabuktis ang uh, wife, nakaready ang SSS to provide the benefits na extend na yan. So, kung i-research nyo, may binigay ng uh, maternity leave benefits na expanded or more than the usual or the, the 60 days before na naging 105 days na ngayon. Okay? Ito ay effective since last year, March 2019. Okay? So, just research it. Baka makalimutan na mga mga nganak dyan, ha? <laughs> 105 days na. Sa mga lalaki, syempre, pag nanganak naman ng asawa, may paternity benefits na binibigay din ng SSS. And this is a 7-day period leave na non-convertible to cash at kailangan talagang tumulong sa asawa sa panganganak for 7 days. At ang nakakatuwa pa dito, may kondisyon yung SSS na yan. <laughs> Ako ay dating HR uh, manager. Yan ay kailangan kasal <laughs> para ma-enjoy yung paternity benefits na yan. Hindi pwedeng uh, unmarried. Okay? So, pag hindi pa kayo kasal, eh, hindi mo may enjoy ito. Itong <laughs> seven days leave na paid ng company. Okay? Now, dahil uh, nag-asawa ka, maaaring magkaroon kayo ng uh, properties bago yung kasal, or during marriage, nagkaroon kayo ng properties. Ano ang masasabi ng batas dito? The regime of separation of property. Okay? Papasahin lang natin ang sinasabi ng batas tungkol dito. What is the regime of separation of property? It governs that each spouse shall own, dispose of, possess, administer, and enjoy his or her own separate estate without need of consent of the other. In this regime, each spouse shall belong all earnings from his or her profession business or industry and all fruits natural, industrial or civil due or received during the marriage from his or her separate property. And this is according to Article 143 of the Family Code. Kung ito ang inyong uh, piniling regime of separation of property. No? Kadalasan naman ito, sumayayaman ito. <laughs> Pag meron kang binitbit na mga ari-arian sa marriage, eh, talaga kailangan nyo mag-usap tungkol dito. Pero mamaya i-explain ko sa inyo na yung mga ganitong agreement-agreement, wala ito sa Biblia. <laughs> Hindi ito pamantayan ng Diyos pagdating sa mga mag-asawa. Kaya maganda ipakinggan nyo yung mamaya. Abangan nyo. So, sabi sa Article 143, Should the future spouses agree In the marriage settlements that their property relations during marriage shall be governed by the regime of separation of property, the provisions of this, cha of this chapter shall be supplementary. Okay? Kung uh, may kasunduan kayong ganyan, siyempre, kahit na nakasulat yan, it can also be the cause of your disagreements or misunderstanding during the marriage. Okay? Now, pag conjugal partnership, Saan mo i-charge? Conjugal partnership. Paano magiging usapan nyo nito? Wait lang ha. Sabi dito sa ating uh, na-research, Article 121, Family Code, The Conjugal Partnership, shall be liable for number one, the support of the spouse, their common children, and the legitimate children of either spouse. However, the support of illegitimate children shall be governed by the provisions of this code on support. All debts and obligations contracted during the marriage by the designated administrator spouse for the benefit of the conjugal partnership of gains or by both spouses or by one of them with the consent of the other. Number three, debts and obligations contracted by the either spouse without the consent of the other to the extent that the family may have benefited. Okay. Uh, article 121. Alam nyo yung civil code, 
na buo yan, na kung pagkaaralan nyo mabuti, this is all about common sense. No? Now, nung magkaroon ng family code, maraming provisions doon sa civil code na hinugot at binago sa family code. Yung common sense na sinasabi dito, syempre kung meron kayong, ano ba, mag-asawa, kung meron kailangan suportan, no? Kasi ang sinasabi dito kanina, support of the spouse, their common children, and the legitimate children of either spouse, however. The support of illegitimate children shall be governed by the provisions of this code on support. Meron separate explanation dyan. <laughs> Halimbawa, kung, kung walang kinalaman yung babae dun sa susuportahan, eh hindi mo dapat kunin yun sa loob ng, ng pinaghihirapan yung dalawa. Okay? Kung pinaghihirapan lang nung isa, dun niya kukunin yun. Kumpara doon sa ibang bagay. Na hindi within, yung gastusin na hindi within the family. Okay? Malinaw tayo dyan, ha? <laughs> okay. Next. Ano ang sinasabi ng uh, batas pa tungkol dyan? Doon sa civil code, pag sinabi natin civil code, before the family code, ito yung time na panahon na hindi pa naupo si Cory. Cory Aquino. Kaya kung kinasal kayo before Cory Aquino, masusunod ang civil code. Ano sinasabi ng civil code? Sa Article 111, the husband is responsible for the support of the wife and the rest of the family. These expenses shall be met first from the conjugal property, then from the husband's capital. And lastly, from the wife's paraphernal property. In case there is a separation of property, by stipulation in the marriage settlements, the husband and wife shall contribute proportionately to the family expenses. Okay? So before Cory Aquino, don't kayo kinasal, husband ang responsible for the support of the wife and the rest of the family. Okay? Nung dumating ang family code during... Cory Aquino's time na, na Article 68, The husband and wife are obliged to live together, observe mutual love, respect and fidelity, and render mutual help and support. So, yun ang uh, sabi sa Article 68. Sa Article 70, the same code, family code, The spouses are jointly responsible for the support of the family. The expenses for such support and other conjugal obligations shall be paid from the community property and, in the absence thereof, from the income of or fruits of their separate properties. In case of insufficiency of, or absence of said income or fruits, such obligations shall be satisfied from the separate properties. Okay? So, kung kinasal naman kayo during the uh, effectivity of the family code, ibig sabihin from Cory's time to Duterte's time, <laughs> okay, pareho na kayong responsible sa pangangailangan ng pamilya. Okay? Kasi, sabi nga, husband and wife are obliged to live together, observe mutual love, mutual ang ginamit na word, respect and fidelity, and render mutual help and support. So, inulit muli yung mutual help and support. At sa Article 70, nilinaw na the spouses are jointly responsible for the support of the family. Now, ang tanong, saan manggagaling, saan kukunin yung support na ito? Siyempre, yung kinikita yung dalawa, pag samahin nyo. Okay? Kung meron kayong uh, mga properties na pinapaupahan, kukunin nyo yan din doon. Or, kung kanya-kanya kayo, may sarili kang property lalaki, may sarili ka rin ka property babae, pwede rin daw kunin doon or fruits of their separate properties. Okay? Kung kulang, in case of insufficiency, sabi, or absence of said income or fruits, kung walang ganon, such obligation shall be satisfied from the separate properties. Diba? Ang batas, eh, ina-assume lahat ng nag-asawa, mayaman eh. <laughs> okay? Ganito ang magsalita ang batas eh. Kaya assume na marami kayong properties, no? Pag nag-asawa ka. <laughs> Kaya ginawa lang nilang uh, uh, in-assume na nila na maraming properties 
yung bawat mag-aasawa. Or baka yumaman during marriage, di ba? At hindi pa rin ma-address ang issue. So, yan po ang sinasabi ng God's uh, man's laws. So, yan po ang pamantayan na binigay ng gobyerno, ang batas ng tao, sa pag-handle ng financial matters tungkol sa family. Okay, ano kaya sabi ng batas ng Diyos? At di Papa Angelo, tungkol dito. What does the Bible and... Uh, What does the Bible say about financial matters, about life? May asawa ka man o individual? Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30 A tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain or fruit, is the Lord's and is holy. Proverbs 3 verse 9 Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. And Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, sabi niyang Panginoon. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour, pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Okay. Yung mga pinasa ko sa inyo, ito yung mga verses na nasa Bible, pagtungkol sa financial matters yung pag-uusapan. Although pag inikot mo yung Bible, magmula umpisa hanggang dulo, wala kang makikita dun na na pamantayan na mag-asawa tungkol sa paghahap ng pera. Wala doon. Walang ganun, mas. Okay? <laughs> ano lang ang binigay ng Diyos? May pamantayan siyang binigay na 10%. Sa lahat ng kinikita natin, itutulong natin sa Panginoon. Kung paano paraan mo man itulong sa Panginoon, ikaw na bahala doon. Tayo nang binigyan ng uh, karapatan tungkol doon. Okay? Kaya kung kayo mag-asawa, gusto niyo talaga mapagpala, pagpalain yung inyong pagsasama. Sa kinikita niyong dalawa, magtatabig yun ng 10%. Personal opinion ko, pag tinulong mo yan sa kapwa, yung 10% na yan, ayan nalago talaga ang inyong financial standing. Babalik yan. Okay? Huwag mong panghinayangan yan. Yung 10% na yan na nasa Biblia, alam nyo, hindi lang pera din ang pwedeng uh, pagbasihan dyan. Yan ay time management din. Kasi 10%, sinasabi na Diyos, sa kanya yun eh. Kung meron kang 24 hours sa isang araw, kunin mo yung 10% nun. Sa 6 days, kasi dapat yung 7th day, pahinga mo eh. Yung 6 days, kumpitin mo total hours mo doon, tapos kunin mo yung 10% ng total 6 days mo, yun ang para sa Diyos. Kaya kung meron ka planong gustong tumulong sa kapwa, yung total oras na yan na nakukot na nakumpute mo, punta ka sa charity organization, ibigay mo yan doon, no, sa mga batang nagugutom, punta ka sa isang foundation, bigay mo yan. So, maraming paraan talaga eh kung gugustuhin mo. Kung gugustuhin nyo mabless talaga ang inyong pagsasama ng material wealth. Binigay ng Diyos ang sekreto. 10% sa akin yan, bigay mo sa akin yan. <laughs> okay? At tandaan nyo, pag pinag-aralan nyo ang Biblia, mayroong tatlong klase ng pagtatikes. So, makikita nyo yan sa sa www.study.com slash academy slash lesson types definition types nandun doon. So, medyo mahaba lang pagka binasa ko. Remember, God still loves us when we give and when we don't give. Sabi sa isang site ito na kinukot ko. Tithing isn't a way to earn God's love because we already have it. In fact, in Matthew chapter 23 Chapter 23, verse 23, Jesus warns against focusing too much on the rules of tithing without paying attention to the more important things like justice, mercy, and faithfulness. No? Nag-warning si Jesus dyan sa Matthew 23, 23. Kung magpo-focus ka masyado sa rules ng tithing without paying attention to the more important things like justicia, mercy, and faithfulness, hindi niya 
hindi ka tanggap-tanggap para sa Diyos. Okay? Kapag naging uh, stricto ka masyado doon sa rules ng tithe. You should be giving in some way. But when it comes to tithing, it's more of a spiritual discussion than a financial discussion. Okay? Because tithing isn't about the money. It's about the heart. It's living with the attitude that we're that we are blessed to be a blessing. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7, sabi, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Tithing means you're being obedient to God, so you should give without expecting anything in return. Giving encourages a grateful and generous spirit and can help steer us away from being greedy or loving money too much. Plus, being outrageously generous is so much more fun. Okay? So, sana napakinggan nyo yun, ha? Ang uh, pagtatiding daw is not about money. Yung, pag, yung 10% na yan, it's not about money. It's about the heart. No? Yun ang sinusukat ng Diyos, eh. It's living with the attitude that we are blessed to be a blessing to others. Okay? Kaya dapat daw magbigay daw tayo according sa ating puso. Dahil ini, iniibig ng Diyos ang nagbibigay ng masaya. Okay? At dapat magbinigay mo yun, hindi ka nag expect ng balik. No? <laughs> Basta na, itulong mo lang. Meron kang 10% na tenabil sa income ninyong mag-asawa. At tinulong mo, basta gano'n lang. Huwag ka nang isip ng kotse na babalik. <laughs> or, or madoble yung amount. No? Huwag ka isip ng gano'n. Makawala ng visa yung, yung uh, binigay mo. Okay? Now, ako naman sa experience ko sa buhay, I'm having problems with uh, giving 10% to the church. Okay? May problema ako ngayon dyan. Bakit? Kasi most Christian churches now took advantage of this Bible passage, no? They made it compulsory for members to give 10% to the church. Nako, yun ang masakit dyan, eh, no? Naging compulsory. Ikapu, ang tawag nila dyan, eh. Eh, ang sabi naman ng Diyos, magbigay ayon sa pinasya ng puso. <laughs> bakit bakit mayroong, mayroong 10% na kailangan ibigay sa simbahan? Okay? Malino naman yung mga binasa ko kanina. Binigay lang ng Diyos na pamantayan yun. Basta 10% sa akin. Oras man yan, panahon, or pera. That's mine. So give it back to me. Yung hindi, hindi kasi yan, yung pag-compulsory na yan, na 10% ibigay sa simbahan. Hindi yan yung exact commandment ng Diyos. Di ba? Ako hindi sa mga binasa ko. Pero these religious leaders took advantage of it. It should be voluntary on the part of the individual. Okay? Na, yung iba nga, ina-announce ko sa microphone, eh, si kapatid, or <laughs> si, <laughs> si brother, nagbigay ng uh, 10% na ganito ang halaga. Yung tuwa-tuwa naman si brother, naka-announce. <laughs> akala mo, akala mo makakatulong yun, ha? O bukas, makalawa, may nakapila ng tao sa bahay mo. <laughs> Ingi ayuda. Okay? O mga nangutang sa'yo. Okay? Hindi binobroadcast kung gano'ng kalaki ang binibigay ng members. Kaya, ano? Ginawang negosyo yung Bible. Ang dami dyan, nag-aaral ng theology, tapos muntang tayo ng sariling simbahan. No? Ginawang business simbahan. Tapos, dahil uh, magaling mag-speech, magaling mag-talk, o oh, dumami yung members, ang dami yung bibigay, so naging bread and butter yung simbahan, Hindi na lang tatrabaho. <laughs> simbahan hindi na tatrabaho. So, ang dami niyan. Tapos, bawal ipahawak yung simbahan sa mga members. Hindi ka kapamilya eh. <laughs> Family members only ang hawak ng administration ng simbahan namin. Dahil kung mapunta sa pamilya mo mga assets nila, no? mga savings sa simbahan, no? naghirapan nila yun eh. <laughs> Kaya pag ito ginawa ko po sa lino ng simbahan mo, isang palatandaan niya na hindi yan sa Diyos. Yung reliyon mo, hindi yan sa Diyos. Pag ginawa ko po sa lino yan. Sorry, pero yan ang katotohanan. Bible na rin yung may sabi, huwag tayong maging bulag na taga-sunod lang. Pag-aralan, pag-isipan, timbangin, 
at humiling ng kar karunungan sa Diyos kung ano ang totoo. The Holy Ghost will tell you the right thing. Pero the Holy Ghost will not tell you anything kung wala ka namang ginawang pag-aaral tungkol sa kinukonsulta mo. <laughs> kung suggest ba yung religion mo or not. Kailangan pag-aralan mo eh bago katulungan ng Holy Ghost to help you understand. So yung pong magbibigay na guide ni Papa Angelo sa inyong lahat ng kung sa bagay na yan. Now, kumonsulta tayo ulit sa mga eksperto. Financial problems in marriage. Sabi dito. Tingnan natin. Pag tungkol sa marriage na pag-uusapan, madalas daw itong limang bagay na nangyayari. At ano ang gagawin nyo tungkol doon? No? Five financial money problems in marriage and what to do about them. From www.resources.addition.fi.com Financial problems in marriage. Number one. Uh, wait. All married couples have disagreements from time to time. It's the nature of being in a long-term relationship. No matter how much you love your spouse, there will still be occasions when they drive you crazy and vice versa, of course. <laughs> Our members sometimes come to us with questions about financial problems in marriage. They're interested in knowing how to avoid financial disputes and arguments. With that in mind, or it is important to think about the ways that marriage will affect your financial picture. Money is the number one cause of disagreements between married couples. With that in mind, here are five money problems in marriage. Some advice to help you resolve them. Okay, number one. Different financial personalities. The first big financial problem that can affect marriages is when each partner has a different financial personality. By that, we mean they think about money differently. A common division of personality might be that one partner is a spender. Gastador. <laughs> Someone who likes to buy new things and doesn't mind paying a high price for them. While the other partner is inherently a saver, preferring to seek bargains. No? Magkaiba kayong personality ito sa pera. Yung isa gastador, yung isa nagtitipid. <laughs> yung tinitipid mo, ginagasta ng isa. <laughs> Ganun po mangyayari yan. That's an issue that can lead to big problems if it's not addressed. Oh, you see? Mga eksperto na nagsasabi nito. The way to handle it is to talk about it openly and calmly. Alam mo, mahal? Napakamahal nung binili mo. <laughs> Yung ganun, di ba? <laughs> openly and calmly. Each of you should express your concerns and work out a blended spending style that's respectful of both your needs. Okay? <laughs> Number two, hidden spending. On a related note, if couples don't talk about spending and money management openly, there's a risk that one partner may hide their spending from the other partner. If it's not checked, it can turn into a problem and erode the trust between the two. Oh, you see that? Pag mayroong isang bili ka ng bili, tapos patago, nagkakaroon ng kalawang no? sa pagsasama yung dalawa erode the trust. It can turn into a problem and erode the trust between the two. Having joint accounts makes it difficult for anybody to hide their spending. Kung may joint account kayo, o pag may lobas na withdraw, malalaman mo. Ano itong inidraw mong 10,000 na ito? Saan napunta ito? Okay. <laughs> While it may not be easy to talk about spending habits, it's important to do it and to make it clear that part of your responsibility as a couple is to be open and upfront about spending. You can also create budgets to help you spend within agreed upon limits. If it's still a problem, then the potential exists that a person with the, with the spending problem needs outside assistance from a therapist or counselor. <laughs> Kapag daw nagpatuloy pa rin, bili ng bili nang hindi nagsasabi sa iyo, eh, may sakit na daw, di ba? Mag, magpatingin na daw sa therapist or a counselor, ibig sabihin na adik. <laughs> Nakaka-addict din pala yung gano'n, ano? yung bilhin ng bilhin ng hindi mo alam, no? yung partner mo. <laughs> Number three, hidden debt. O ito naman, yung nangungutang ng hindi mo alam. Okay? What happens if one spouse runs up their debts and doesn't tell their partner about them? This is a problem that people can bring into a relationship if they don't reveal they've got a significant amount of credit card debt. 
or it can arise after you get married if hidden spending turns into a hidden debt no kung uh, lumabas na after nung kasal niyo dahil palang utang sa credit card tal <laughs> gulat ka na lang ikaw na nagbabayad <laughs> if you have a spending problem and you run up a debt you have a responsibility to tell your partner because it can affect them too For example, if you have unpaid debt and the two of you want to buy a home, delinquencies on your credit card can prevent you from qualifying or ensure you get stuck with a high interest rate. The solution is to talk about spending and debt without shame and to reveal any hidden debt to your partner immediately. Sabihin mo na. Okay, bagong papirma yan ng, ng, ng marriage contract yan, partner mo. Sabihin mo na kagad. Ano nga nakatago mo utang? Dahil sigurado mapapasa sa iya. <laughs> okay. De, alamin mo na, ha, brother? <laughs> Then work out a debt reduction plan alone or with a financial planner. That way, you'll be able to pay it off and improve your financial picture together. Okay? So, pangatlo na yan. Nagtatago ng mga utang sa asawa. <laughs> okay. Number four. Financial power plays. When one spouse earns more money than the other, it can create financial inequality and lead to resentment. Especially if it's not something you talk about. Okay? Pag kunikita daw yung isa ng mas kesa dun sa isa, it can create financial inequality and lead to resentment if it's not something you talk about. It's not uncommon for one spouse to choose to stay at home after starting a family. The spouse who's at home is working full-time at, ch at child care but not earning any income for it. That can create tension. Oh, kaya pala. Kaya pala tensionado. <laughs> Sino ba yun? <laughs> okay. <laughs> to avoid this problem, have a conversation about what staying at home means for your relationship. Both partners should be on board. The same is true if one partner makes a lot more than the other. Divide expenses equitably and check in with one another regularly to, take, to tackle any problems as they arise. To, para maiwasan daw yung problema ganyan, yung feeling na ganyan, mas malaki kita ng isa, tapos yung isa naman busy sa bahay, working full time at, at taking care of the children, but not any earning in income for it, that can create tension down. So to avoid this, mag-usap, what staying at home means for your relationship, no? Baka kailangan mo na magtrabaho, honey. <laughs> so, both partners should be on board. Dapat nagkakaintindihan. Okay? Kung meron siyang pangarap at hindi maging homemaker lang, eh, pagbigyan mo. Baka gusto niya talagang uh, matupad yung kanyang dream to work outside for something, no? At dapat, hindi working for others. Kung may negosyo kayo, dapat working for you also. Okay? Number five. Money and your extended families. O, <laughs> tako. Laging problema to. Sa mga couples natin. One of the thick One of the trickiest financial problems to navigate is when one spouse has a family member who's in financial distress. It's natural to want to help people you love, but it's undeniably stressful when the help is ongoing and the money is not going to be paid back. <laughs> okay. Sino ba kamag-anak ang nagbayad ng utang? <laughs> okay. Ako lang yata yun. <laughs> okay. As you might imagine, The solution is honesty and transparency in any financial transactions involving your family. It's important for both partners to be on board. It may also be helpful to set boundaries how much you loan or give and how much you're willing to let it affect your lives. O kailangan meron daw boundary. Kung, kung 1,000 lang, ang papahira mo, 1,000 lang. <laughs> Wag paabuti na 10,000. <laughs> Malaking amount na yun. Mag-aawayan nyo talaga pag hindi bumalik. Okay? At ibabalik ba naman yan kung family member mo ang uh, ang humingi? Eh, mag-pray mo na lang. <laughs> na makatulong na malaki sa kanila yon. <laughs> Pero don't expect. Okay? Kaya pagka yung ibang kapamilya kasi na nagpahiram, 
Tapos sa expect ng balik, eh mag-aaway talaga kayo niya, masisira ang relasyon niyong pamilya dahil sa pera. Okay? Kung kapatid mo yung tinulungan mo, sige na. Baka nagbagong buhay niya dahil sa pinautang mo. Ah, uh, di pagdasal mo na lang na maalala niya. <laughs> okay? Pag ikaw naman na nangailangan. Okay? Sana maalala niya. It's also worth keeping in mind that in some cases, you may want to take an end run around giving money if you've got a family member who's irresponsible and always seems to need help. Ang oh, daming ganito, no? Irresponsible, parang laging kailangan ng tulong. Kabibigay mo lang ng isang araw, kailangan na naman. <laughs> okay? May ganyan, no? Naaabuso. Naaabuso yung pagtulong. You might be better off getting them a couple of appointments with a financial planner than throwing money than throwing money after the problem. Kailangan may mga advice kung paano yung mamalik sa kanilang pera. Okay? Para hindi ka bigay ng bigay. Kaya nga, nandun pa rin yung prinsipyo ng Diyos na turuan mo, mamingwit, kung nangangailangan ng isda. Susunod, saan ang mamimingwit? Turuan mo mamingwit. <laughs> okay? Money can cause disagreements in marriage. But nearly all of the financial problems in marriage can be solved with honesty and clear communication. Secrecy and dishonesty won't help and, in most cases, will just make the problem worse. Okay? So, balikan natin. Itong limang bagay na, na nagiging problema sa marriage. Pagtungkol sa pera. Number one. Different financial personalities. Kapag kayo daw may magkaibang uh, personality sa paghahap ng pera, magastos yung isa, ikaw uh, kulipot, nako, may problema daw dyan. Kailangan pantay. Okay? <laughs> hindi pwedeng yung tinitipid mo, hindi lulustay ng isa. Okay? Number two, hidden spending. Nako, wala dapat tinatago sa mga binibili. Talaga mag-aawayan yung mag-asawa yan. At nandun yung, nandun po kapasok yung respeto, no? Sa marriage counseling namin, dahil naka-built in yung respect sa lalaki, eh, kahit na pera mo yan, at binili mo, no, babae, binili mo yung gamit na gustong-gusto mo, kahit sarili mo pera yan, pero di mo pinaalam sa husband mo, magagalit ang husband. May problema kayo dyan. Okay? Magkakaproblema kayo dyan. Bakit? Maramdaman ng lalaki yan, dahil may built-in chip na nakatinatawag na respect <laughs> na in-install ng Diyos sa katawan ng lalaki yan. <laughs> Kaya huwag kang magtaka kung bakit nagagalit ang husband mo sa tuwing may bibiling kang hindi niya alam. Okay? <laughs> Number three, hidden debt. Yung mga utang bago mo pinakasalan, may utang siya, eh ikaw ang magbabayad niya. <laughs> Kaya ipagtapat eh, na bago pa magkasalan yung mga utang na yan. At kung kasal na kayo at may tinatago kang mga pagkakautang, eh talagang problema yan, no? Kapag hindi alam ng husband mo, may mga, may mga bumbay na nang hunting sa'yo sa bahay. Hindi <laughs> ka mahagilap ng mga bumbay. O asawa mo tatanungin, nasa asawa mo, ha? Dami utang sa akin yan. <laughs> Away ang pag-uwi mo. Yari ka. Number four, financial power plays eto yung kapag ka mas malaki yung kinikita ng isa so pwedeng magkaroon ng uh, financial inequality and lead to resentment lalo na kung hindi niyo pinag-uusapan kung uh, tahimik lang yung isa na hindi kumikita syempre medyo nandoon yung hiya at nahiya siyang i-discuss sa sa asawa niya e eh, talaga mahihirapan kang i-handle yung situation niya so how to What to do to avoid that problem daw? Have a conversation about what staying at home means for your relationship. Talaga bang dito na lang po, dito na lang ako hani sa bahay. <laughs> okay? Alam mo, plano mo sa akin. <laughs> so, may ganun. Dapat na usapan. And number five, money and your extended family. So, kung may extended family ka na lapit na lapit sa'yo, tapos, apekto na ang uh, financial savings ninyo mag-asawa so something to 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 talk about yan yeah. okay wag pamihasain ang lapit ng lapit na kapamilya dahil sasandalan kanyan for life 
<laughs> okay. Huwag pamiyasain. Okay. Now, ang uh, another advice pa ng mga experts, Duta, may oras pa tayo. Financial advice, married couples should not ignore from www.thebalance.com Personal disagreements over financial decision making are among the main reasons that married couples end up in divorce court. Ito diretso na divorce. No? <laughs> financial decision making. Yung mga disagreements. Unfortunately, even when couples have resources and financial advice readily available to them, they still end up fighting over money. Oh, may yaman siguro to. Ganito ang nangyayari. Kahit na may pera sila, at uh, mayroon namang advisor, nag-aaway pa rin. A survey conducted by Fidelity Investments found that couples carrying debt argued significantly more, 67% about money, than those couples who were not burdened with debt, 41% lang. Yung mga hindi baon sa utang na couples, 41%. While yung lagi nagtatalo sa pera ay 67% dun sa sinurvey nila. So, avoiding agitation, sabi dito. Beyond repaying personal or professional debts, the Fidelity survey found that friction between couples often originated around savings and how much money should be collectively saved by the time the pair, king magasawa daw, reach retirement age. Okay? In the U.S., a general lack of aggregate savings among this demographic paired with the largest population of retirees drawing on social security than ever before has combined to intensify stress on these aging couples. Other common arguments stem from where important financial and legal papers should be located and who ought to be the primary decision maker in regard to daily financial choices. So kasi sa US, dahil parehong uh, kumikita, so big issue talaga sa kanila to pagka parehong malaking kinikita nilang dalawa. Iba kasi yung kultu kultura, um, kultura doon. So, ang mga babae doon, after the war, yun sa history ng US, kung pag-aaralan nyo, nung matuto ng uh, kumita ang mga babae after the war, kaya na nilang tumindig sa sarili nilang paa pagka uh, iniwanan sila ng husband nila. They can stand on their own. That's why enjoy na enjoy sila doon na may divorce doon. <laughs> Ayan ko. <clears throat> Kaya tingnan nyo kung anong family meron sila doon sa US. Another survey found that 70% of married couples regularly argued about money, surpassing fights about household chores, togetherness, sex, snoring, and dietary choices. Oh, 70% down ng married couples ay regular na nag-aaway about pera. <laughs> Nilagpasan na daw yung mga away tungkol sa mga gawain bahay, togetherness, sex, snoring, yung pag, ano yung snoring? Paghilik and dietary choices. Okay? Couple cited frivolous purchases, household budgeting, and credit card debt as the biggest sources of friction. Friction. Yeah. In an effort to help married couples reduce personal disagreements about money and make more accountable financial choices individually and together, below are a few tips that married couples should not ignore. Okay? Top personal finance tips for married couples na itong bibigay nila. Mag-create daw ng separate bank accounts plus one joint account. Okay? Na separate bank accounts plus one joint accounts. Number two, track your spending. I-monitor yung mga gastusin. Number three, set financial priorities together. Saan ba pupunta yung mga pera natin? Saan ba, ano ba ang kailangan natin paggastusan in the near future? Okay? Number one, two, three, four, ato pang apat, communicate about finances regularly. Communicate about finances regularly. Araw-araw, pag-usapan niya. <laughs> okay? And number five, make a plan to pay down existing debt together. So, may mga utang. Gumawa ng plano. Paano babayaran? <laughs> okay? O, involved ka na. Kahit, di, kahit na hindi ikaw yung umutang. <laughs> involved ka na. 
Pagtulungan nyo lang bayaran. And number six, be honest about cause and debts. Maging tapat sa iyong partner tungkol sa mga gastos at mga utang. So, in-explain dito yung bawat item na sinabi ko, tinan nyo lang sa www.thebalance.com Financial Advice for Married Couples. Okay, nandito po lahat yan. Nakapusin po tayo sa oras pag binasa ko lahat yan. So, in closing, ang uh, payo ni Papa Angelo sa inyo lahat, put all your joint profits in the institution, which is the family. Huwag magkanya-kanya. Payo ko yan, ha? Philippine culture. So, so why? Before buying anything, magpaalam sa husband. Kasi, sabi ko sa inyo, may built-in respect na naka- na naka-install sa husband eh. Kahit pera mo pa yan. Sakop pa rin yan ang utos ng Diyos na wives, submit to your husbands. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. Subukan mong i-disobey ang commandment na yan. Lagyan mong kondisyon. Ah, Papaangelo, hindi lahat ng oras dapat eh, magpasakop sa, sa husband. Sisongal yan. <laughs> Pag nilagyan mong ganyang kondisyon, eh, tingnan natin kung ano mangyari. Okay? May built-in punishment yan. Talagang mawala ng gana sa iyo husband mo. Kaya, God standards na ang masusunod kapag buhay mag-asawa na ang pinag-uusapan natin. Hindi standard ng society, hindi standard ng kapitbahay, hindi standard ng gobyerno, at lalong hindi standard mo. Okay? God standards na ang masusunod. Kaya, yung mga pinasa ko sa inyo, Reviewin nyo lang itong FB Live para mas maintindihan nyo. Uh, kung uh, may gusto kayong linawin, meron po akong hotline. <laughs> hotline. Okay? Tawag lang kayo sa landline ko. Uh, 8800-3368. <laughs> okay? So, mga kapatid, ibalik ko lang yung music ko sundali. Mga kambahin ko ang Pilipino, Tandaan natin na hindi inoobliga ng Diyos na magpakasal o magpamilya ang bawat individual. Kaya kung mag-aasawa ka o biglaan kang nag-asawa dahil nakabuntis ka, pag-aralan mo naman, pare, mare, ang buhay mag-asawa, huwag pasok ng pasok. Okay? So, the moment na dinesisyonan mong mag magpamilya o bigla kang napunta sa sitwasyong kailangan mo na mag-asawa, masasakot ka na ng God's Kingdom Laws on Marriage. Kaya kung nag-asawa ka sa maling dahilan, daladala dal, mo yung kamalian na yan hanggang sa pagsasama nyo. At siguradong puro mali ang mga desisyon magagawa nyo sa buhay dahil hindi kayo ready sa pag-asawa. Puro kamalian ang mangyayari along the way sa buhay ninyong mag-asawa. Pwedeng mag-iba-iba ang tatay ng mga anak mo kung mali-mali din ang desisyon mo sa buhay. Pwedeng magkahiwalay ang mga anak mo. At marami pang possibility na pwede mangyari if you started your life the wrong way. Pero alam niyo ba may pag-asa pa siyang maitama? Oo naman, may pag-asa maitama. Para maging tama at takbo ng buhay niyo, mag-asawa, kahit na nagsimula kayo sa mali, yes, may pag-asa maitama. Paano, Papa Angelo? Nagpakasal kayo o napilit na kayo mag-asawa dahil sa maling dahilan? Para maalis ang sumpa ng maling choice na yan sa buhay, kailangan niya siyang panindigan ng buong puso. Dahil kayo din ang may kagagawan niya eh. Di ba? Hindi naman yung Diyos. Hindi naman yung barangay. Hindi naman yung <laughs> kahit dalawa lang yun eh. Kaya pag lumabas ang bata, huwag niyo siyang sisihin kung bakit hindi natupad ang mga pangarap niyo <laughs> dahil sa bata. Walang kinalaman ng bata niyo. Walang kasalanan ng bata niya. Huwag niyo siyang sisihin na hindi nyo na-enjoy ang pagkadalaga o pagkabinata nyo dahil sa batang lumabas. Walang kinalaman ng bata sa kalimugan nyo o kapusukan ng damdamin nyo. Nauna kasi ang kalimugan o kapusukan ninyo bago lumabas ang bata. So, walang kinalaman ng bata dyan. Kaya pag tinanggap nyo ng buong puso ang batang yan at ginampanan nyo ng mabuting papel nyo bilang magulang, maaalis ang sumpang dulot ng maling desisyon ninyo sa buhay. Pag pinag-aralan niyo pa kung paano maging mabuting husband at tatay, wife at nanay, ang pagsasama ninyo ay pagpapalain. Ito lamang ang formula para maitama ang mga maling desisyon sa buhay. 
ang baguhin ang perspective. Gawing inspiration for good at i-translate yung bad decisions in life. And you will surely both attract blessings in all forms. Makakamit ninyo ang mga nice ninyo sa inyong pamilya. Just follow the guide about the true design of a family. Huwag kang makinig sa gobyerno, huwag kang makinig sa society, huwag kang makinig sa sulsol. Hindi po ang kikinagawa ng iba ay tama. Hindi po ang kikinagawa ng marami ay tama. Kung may natanggap kang payo sa kaibigan mo o sino mo pinagtitiwalaan mo, paano mo masusukat kung magiging effective ba yung pinayo niya sa inyo? Ito ay kapag ang makikinabang ay both of you as spouses and to the best interest of the children. Pero kung isa lang ang makikinabang sa inyo dalawa, hindi yan payong galing sa Diyos. At hindi pwede makilang ang gobyerno o society sa pamilya dahil ito ay pangihimasok sa product ng iba. Tayo ay product ng Diyos. Diyos lamang ang pwede magsabi kung ano ang nararapat gawin sa ating family problems. Because human family is God's product. So if you listen to the government or society how to handle your family, you will only suffer. Kung suffer ka lang, kung suffer ang pamilya mo, magugulat ka na lang, kahit anong kahit gawin mo, mahirap pa rin kayo. Kahit, kapat, kahit kalabaw ka pa rin sa katatrabaho. Because not knowing God's principles and laws on marriage will make you suffer kahit ignorante ka. Or dahil ignorante ka. Okay? Hindi mo alam eh will make you suffer continuously. And remember, our ignorance will not save us from the consequences built in when you disobey or when you don't know God's principles and laws. Pagugulat ka na lang, Lord, bakit wala naman akong ginagawang masama? Bakit may namalas ako? <laughs> Maaring hindi masama para sa'yo, pero meron kang hindi nasusunod kaya hindi mo nakakamit yung gusto mo. And uh, your ignorance will never save you from the punishments. So better not to be ignorant by knowing his true design of a family. Yung mga binabasa ko sa inyo, mga nire-research ko, eh balikan nyo. Apply it. Doon mo makikita yung wisdom eh kapag in-apply mo. Pag binasa mo lang, then hindi mo naman sinayal sa asawa mo, sa'yo lang yun. Kaya wala nakakalam. Paano mag-work out? kung hindi mo isi-share sa asawa mo at hindi nyo i-apply. No? Hindi yung sinasabing inalam mo lang pero hindi mo naman ginawa. Because everything here on earth was created to function by laws, by principles. Kaya kahit hindi ka religious, kahit hindi ka pala simba, pero sinusunod mo yung mga nakasunod sa Biblia dahil naiintindihan mo, you will attract blessings. Okay? you will surely attract blessings. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a priest, not, neither a religious leader, or do I represent a particular church? Wala po akong religion. Because religions are created by man and not by God. I'm just an obedient follower of God and man's laws. I studied both the Bible and the laws of man for the last 30 years now. And I never stopped from learning. I'm still studying up to now. Kasi yun na commandment ng Diyos. Never stop learning. Kahit sa gabi, mag-aral daw tayo. Yeah, it's in the Bible. So these things became my guide in running my life properly. God helped me comprehend all these life's problems. And the secret to avoid life's problem is to simply follow the principles He taught in the Bible. So use them as your guide while journeying through this life. Kaya kung individual ka, magulang, o solo parent ka na naguguluhan sa buhay at lubang na apektuhan ka ng pandemic na ito, or you are about to lose your sanity, remember, there is always an answer to life's problems. Andito lang si Baba Angelo. So come to Baba Angelo because life is not a mystery daw, according to Dr. Miles Monroe. Everything in life is designed to function by laws. And these God's laws are life principles na applicable sa buhay natin. And if we just follow them, life would be prosperous, peaceful. Magiging madali na lang i-handle ang mga trial, 
four hardships sa buhay if you have the right guy. Parang biyahe kasi yan, talaga. Journey naman talaga itong ating buhay. Eh. It's a journey that we need a guide to reach our destination safe and sound. Kung wala tayong guide, yun, trial and error mangyayari. Ang uh, masakit dyan, baka sa trial and error natin, maubos yung savings natin, maubos yung uh, resources mo, masakta ng family mo, masira ang relationship nyo, baka wala nang chance, no? For a second chance. <laughs> Ang mo nang hintayin yun. Okay? Kaya, the blessings for following sincerely and humbly yung God's principles ng walang kondisyon, just follow them, talagang your family will enjoy the blessings na naka-attach sa pagsunod. So let's start it inside our homes. Let's start inside our families. On a daily basis, araw-araw, minuto-minuto. Kaya, once again, guys, this is Papa Angelo, your Garden Man's Lost Life Counselor. Naliniwala lang kapag may tamang guide tayo, may tamang takbo lagi ang biyahe ng ating buhay. Thank you so much for watching and for listening intently. Thank you, uh, bro. Gabriel Rosales and to Nangapo, salamat for watching. Sana abangan niyo ulit ako next Sunday. <laughs> okay magsawa, okay magpagod ha. Kahit dalawa lang kayo nanonood sa akin. <laughs> Di ba? Kung may sisiyan na naman to sa maraming tao, o di parang ako na lang yung nagturo sa kanila, 'di ba? <laughs> Baka pagbago man lang tayo ng isa, dalawa, tatlong pamilya, mapapatibay natin yung kanila pag sasama. Eh galak na galak ang ating Panginoon dyan. Okay? Dahil uh, kailangan niya ng maraming taong magpipreserve ng earth para sa susunod na generation. Okay? Thank you, uh, Miss De Paula, for my hair and makeup. <laughs> and to you, Espolo, for my shirts every Sunday. Hindi na ako makakapag-closing song. Hindi ko na-prepare. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye.